from topic for today uh, chemical changes the GCC CGP AQ here's the video topic 4 chemical changes the pH scale is how acid or alkaline something is the lower numbers are more acidic and the higher more alkaline the middle, 7, is neutral. The pH of a solution can be measured by an indicator that changes colour depending on the pH, e.g. universal indicator turns the colours on the table above. The pH can also be measured by a probe that you put in the solution. It tells you the numerical value. This is very accurate. Acids and bases neutralise each other. Acids have a pH less than 7 and form H plus ions in water whereas alkali has a pH greater than 7, forms OH minus ions in water. A base is any substance that will react with an acid to form a salt. All alkalis are bases, but not all bases are alkalis, <laughs> if that makes sense. The reaction between acids and bases is called neutralisation, and can be shown by the general equation acid plus base makes salt plus water. This can also be shown between the H and the O plate OH ions, as H plus plus OH minus makes H2O. When an acid and alkaline react in balance, the result is always neutral. An indicator can be used to show this. Titrations allow you to find out what volume of acid and alkali can react together to neutralise each other. This can then be used to find the concentration of either the acid or the alkali. It is performed in five steps, but it's usually a six mark exam question so it's very important to understand as required practical. Step 1 is to put 25 centimetres cubed of alkali into a conical flask, using a pipette for exact measurement, and 2 to 3 drops of indicator as well. Step 2, fill a burette with acid of a known concentration, whilst wearing safety goggles, and record the initial value. Step 3, use the burette to add the acid to the alkali slowly, swirling the conical flask, and going even slower when the indicator starts to change colour to neutral. Step 4. When the indicator turns completely neutral, phenolphthalein turns pink, stop putting in more acid. Step 5. Is to record the final volume of acid in the burette and use the two measurements to find the volume of acid needed to neutralise the alkali. This can then be used to find the concentration of the alkali. Titration should be repeated to find consistent readings with an error margin of 0.1 cm cubed. These should find the mean with autonomous results to get the final measurement. To make titrations as accurate as possible, an indicator with sudden colour change must be used. This means not universal indicator. Instead, either phenophaline, I think that's how you pronounce it, litmus or methyl orange. I would recommend using methyl orange in the exam because it is easier to remember, spell, and say. Acids produce protons, H plus ions, in water, e.g. hydrochloric acid makes H plus plus CH minus. But acids can be strong or weak. The strong ones ionise completely in water, and all the particles dissociate to release H plus ions, whereas weak acids do not fully ionise in solution and their reaction is reversible, i.e. an equilibrium reaction, e.g. CH3COOH, in a re reversible reaction, makes H+, plus CH3COO-. Plus the pH of an acid or alkali is a measure of the concentration of H plus ions in the solution. Every decrease in one on the scale, the concentration of H plus ions increases tenfold. This can be shown by the formula, factor H plus ion concentration changes by equals 10 to the power of minus x. The pH of a strong acid is always lower than the pH of a weak acid at the same concentration. An important difference to note is that acid strength is the proportion of acid molecules ionised in water, and the concentration is the amount of acid in a volume of water but the pH would decrease with increasing acid concentration, regardless of whether it's a strong or weak acid. 
acid plus base makes salt plus water, as well as alkali bases. Bases can also be metal oxides and metal hydroxides. The combination of metal and acid decides the salt that is made in the chemical reaction. E.g. hydrochloric acid plus copper oxide makes copper chloride plus water. Acids and metal carbonates also react to make salt, water and carbon dioxide. E.g. hydrochloric acid plus sodium carbonate makes sodium chloride, water and carbon dioxide. You can make soluble salts using insoluble bases. This is also a practical GCC but not a required one. This can also be done in five steps. Step one, pick an acid and an, and an insoluble base, e.g. copper oxide and hydrochloric acid. Step two, warm the acid using a Bunsen burner. Step three, add the base to the acid until no more can dissolve, i.e. the base is in excess. Step four, Filter out the solid from the salt solution. Step 5. Heat the solution in a water bath and then leave to crystallise to form salts or salt crystals. The reactivity series is a comparative list of metals reactivity. This is determined by how easily they form positive ions slash lose electrons. This is also how well it reacts with water or acid and forms a definitive order of reactivity. Potassium, sodium, lithium, calcium, magnesium, carbon, zinc, iron, hydrogen and copper, with potassium being the most reactive and copper being the least reactive. Carbon and hydrogen are in there to determine their usefulness in reactions. E.g. metals less reactive than carbon can be extracted from ores by reduction with carbon, but metals higher cannot. And metals more reactive than hydrogen we re will react with acids. Metals less reactive will not. Acid plus metal makes salt plus hydrogen. This reaction can be used to find the reactivity of metals. The speed being indicated by the rate of hydrogen bubbles being produced. E.g. magnesium reacts vigorously and produces a lot of bubbles, but iron produces relatively few. You can use the burning splint test to confirm that hydrogen is formed in these reactions. Metal plus water makes a metal hydroxide plus hydrogen. Potassium, sodium, lithium and calcium will all react with water, but zinc, iron and copper will not. Metals are formed, found naturally in their oxidised form, an ore. Oxidation is the gain of electron, is the gain of oxygen slash the loss of electrons in the metal to form a positive iron. And reduction is the loss of oxygen slash gain of electrons to the metal. Metals can be reduced by using carbon, e.g. iron oxide plus carbon makes iron and CO2. Remember only metals less reactive than carbon on the reactivity series can do this. Some metals are so unreactive that they don't form ores such as gold. Oxidation and reduction in terms of electrons are called redox reactions. The easiest way to remember this is by oil rig. Oxidation is loss, reduction is gain of electrons. Reduction and oxidation happen at the same time, hence the name redox. Redox. E.g. metals reacting with acids, the iron is oxidised and the hydrogen is reduced. This also happens in halogen displacement reactions e.g. where chlorine is reduced and bromine is oxidised. A more reactive metal will always displace a less reactive metal from its compound, e.g. iron plus copper sulphate makes iron sulphate plus copper. In this reaction, because the iron loses electrons, it is oxidised, and copper gains electrons because it's reduced. In exams, you could be asked to write down the word or symbol equation for the metal displacement reactions. The one way you could be asked is it is in an ionic equation which only shows the bits of reaction which actually do stuff. E.g. from the examples above, sulphate does nothing so it will be left out. This is called a spectator ion. The other ions that do change have their charges shown to show how they react. E.g. the ionic equation for above is Cu2 plus plus Fe makes Fe2 plus plus Cu. 
This way you can focus on the substances which are oxidised or reduced. Electrolysis is where an electric current is passed through the solution, causing the compounds to decompose into their ions and react to the anode and cathode. E.g. lead bromide, the lead is attracted to, to the negative cathode, called an electrode, because it's a positive ion, and the bromine is attracted to the positive electrode, called the anode, because it's a negative ion. The solution in it is called the electrolyte, and in this case it's just molten lead bromide. This can be used to show through half equations of the anode and cathode, e.g. Pb2+, plus plus 2e- minus makes Pb. Pb is the chemical symbol for lead. Metals more reactive than carbon can be extracted from their ores using electrolysis, e.g. aluminium from aluminium oxide, which is mixed with cryolite to lower the melting point, is then made molten and the aluminium ions go to the negative electrode. They pick up spare electrons and become solid, going to the bottom of the tank. The half equation for this is Al3 plus plus 3 minus makes Al. It is important to find out how to make half equations, so I will leave a worksheet attached below with more details. When electrolysis takes place on an aqueous solution, the hydrogen and hydroxide ions from the water will also try to be discharged from the solution, so they must be considered. Which ions get dis discharged depends on the relative reactivity. At the cathode, the less reactive element will get discharged from their electrolyte. E.g. sodium versus hydrogen, hydrogen will be released. But copper versus hydrogen, copper will be released. At the anode, the same rule applies. OH- is the more reactive substance, so if halides are present, they will get released. If not, oxygen and water will get released e.g. copper sulphate solution, the copper is released and coats the cathode, and water and oxygen are released at the anode, which can be seen as bubbles. The important half equation here to learn is 4 OH- makes O2 plus 2 H2O plus 4 E-. Minus. Another example is sodium chloride solution. The sodium is more reactive, so hydrogen bubbles leave the electrolyte. Chlorine ions are present, so chlorine is produced at the anode. Electrolysis can be done in a lab following one of the diagrams. You can test for the gases produced because chlorine bleaches litmus paper, hydrogen makes a pop when lighted with a splint, and oxygen will relight a glowing splint. One more thing to remember is that half equations, like any other equations, should be balanced. This can be worked out by writing out the full reaction equation first, and then taking out the bits you need to form an ionic equation, then separating that into two to get two half equations. Thank you so much for watching. Links are down below. Like, subscribe and comment. Follow for more. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye!